Hey guys, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at Winter NAM 2018 in Anaheim talking to Sheldon Dingwall. We got Matt on bass. We'll talk to him in a second. Sheldon, it's really loud in here. Hopefully you he can hear me. Um, I, I dropped by the booth early this morning and saw that you got some new stuff going on. The like the triple pickup stuff is one of the main things, right? But do you want to tell us what's brand new for this show? Absolutely. So. Um, one of the most exciting things is the new production version of the D-Bird and the idea behind this was to take the original uh, design which was designed by a Chrysler designer and do what if it was designed by Lamborghini designers. So it kind of has the muscular curves of a, of a Lamborghini Huracan and uh, we... A little we, thinner. Yeah, yeah. And then we've, we've moved the, um, the strap pin locations uh, quite radically to the point where when Matt takes his hands off the instrument, it hangs perfectly. Good thinking. It's a and common complaint that the headstock heaviness of the, the original. Exactly. And and so we're not we're not it's 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 a riff on on the original. We're not trying to recreate the original. Uh, we love the design, and this is just our interpretation of it. Uh, Before and with the three pickup system. It's become really popular for us because it offers kind of the best of both worlds. It offers you all kinds of different fender tones as well as all three in, in uh, pickups together, which gives you just this huge fat tone, but with the extended scale length, it also has crispness and punch and clarity. So you can use each of the three pickups individually or any combination? Um, you get four choices. So you have the bridge by itself, these two together, the middle pickup, which is uh, very Fender Precision-like, which is, in our opinion, that's the tone of, of that the market is going to right now, and then all three pickups together. And are they in series or parallel? Or it's a combination I guess. of two in series in parallel with one. I guess you can't do three in parallel, really, can you? Well, we're big fans of the of the series tone. Um, uh, everything we do is is essentially aimed at a, at a purpose of, of cutting through and what works best in the mix. And the guy that figured out those different pickup combinations was Rob Vanderlo over here from Epica. And Epica is a band with a really dense mix. It's got keyboards, it's got a drummer that, that does They're double like kick. symphonic metal, right? Exactly, yeah. So there's very limited room for the bass in that mix. And so he designed, he, he rewired the pickups to work best for a dense mix and just cut through it and uh, works unbelievably for that. Cool. Now, are, is each pickup itself a single coil or like a stacked no, humbucker? Or? It's like a reverse P, so there's a bass coil and a treble coil. Okay. Um, Matt, do you mind holding the body up so they can get a better idea, like flip it so they can see oh, sort yeah. of the profile and maybe flip it around? The back is, is kind of interesting too. The tummy cut is almost larger than the whole back of the instrument. And the reason for that is because the pins are in the back, it tilts the bass back into you. It's, it's very sleek. How much, what are like, what's the weight like compared to the original? Everything we do is in about the eight to nine pound range. Um, we find that's the kind of the sweet spot. If the bass is too light, it doesn't respond well. If it's too heavy, it, it compresses too much. So uh, this would be in about the eight and a quarter pounds. Okay, so just another couple nerd details and then we'll have Matt play a little more. So you mentioned it's a multi-scale, it's 34 to 36.25 or something? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and that kind of confuses people what, what the whole purpose of multi-scale is. And essentially, you've got two stringed instrument families. You've got the harps and pianos that have the harp-shaped long bass strings, short trebles. And then you have the, uh, the lyre and the violin family where the guitar came from with a single scale. And if you look at a piano or a harp, they can cover in a huge range from lows to highs. And that's because of that extended scale in the lows transferring to a, a shorter scale in the highs. And so we just combine that with the bass. Combine the piano. Is it largely to intonate the notes better? From 
well, when you extend the scale, you do get a, a, a better intonation, but it's mainly to EQ the strings, so they all have the same timber. Okay. Okay. And from a live perspective, you're not trying to mix four different timbers. Uh, you know, the bass strings too dark and, and the G strings too bright. Nice. They all have the same timber, so you just, you just EQ for the room. Okay. Sound men love it. Okay, so when we came into the video, Matt was playing all three pickups, is that right? Yep. Matt, did you want to add anything before we have you play a little bit more? Or I mean, uh, the only other thing about the, the multi-scale length is it makes it a lot easier for your right hand because essentially the tension on all of the strings is the same. So when you're really digging in on the, the thicker bottom strings, they're not flapping around. And the, the, the top strings are a lot more, they're a lot more playable really because if you have, normally if you have like a 35 or a longer scale length bass, that high G string is going to be really tight and not pliable at all. So doing bends and just just the way it responds to your right hand attack is really even throughout the whole frequency range. It's just it's just easier to play. Cool. And I, I think we forgot to mention Matt, you play in some cool bands. You want to tell people what bands you play in? I do, yeah. Uh, the main band I'm working with right now is called the Soviet, like Soviet, but spelled with a Z because, well, they're, they're from Mexico and that's how they spell it there. <laughs> um, so it's sort, of, sort of like a uh, Spanish language version of Foo Fighters, if, if that's your kind of thing. Uh, and I do a lot of session work in Los Angeles with a bunch of people. Just I actually just did a, a reggae track for a pop artist named Sammy J a couple days ago with my NG3, which sounded just outrageous. The engineer couldn't stop raving about how perfect it was just going straight into the desk through the through Monique. So. Sweet. Well, let's have you play some different settings. What setting are you going to put it on now? Well, I, I love the three pickup setting, so let's let's run that down again, and then we can run through the other the other settings. Uh, the other ones are a little lower in output, so we might have to, to adjust the the gain staging in between. All right, we'll take care of that. He's on top of it. and punchy. Really punchy, yeah. It has a really cool growl. It also responds to distortion really well. Something about the the, the way the mid-range is voiced, it allows a lot of bottom end punch to come through without any muddiness and a ton of clarity and articulation in the top end, whether you're playing with fingers or a pick. Cool. So that was all three again. That was all three. So yeah. what are we going to do now? Uh, so let's let's switch to the middle setting now, which is a little more p bassy. Just the middle pick. Yeah, and uh, just just for uh, just for fun, let's let's roll off the tone a little bit to get even more p bassy. That sound good? Nice and warm. Uh, for a second, it gave me like flashbacks of like uh, come together. Harrison, where are you trying? I can hardly, I can hardly hear. I could only hear some of it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Sweet. <laughs> All right, what else? Um, and let's. So now we're gonna do uh, middle and bridge. And the way this rotary is, they're in parallel together, right? I try. Um, so let's do something a little more like Music Man vibey. More scooped, yeah. nasal, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, doing the the parallel wiring does that sort of natural, at least perceived scoop, which is just more true bass and treble, right? Now what are we gonna hear? Um, and then let's go all the way to the bridge pickup. So um, is it sort of J bass tones with it? Yeah, yeah. If you roll off the uh, the tone a little bit, you get kind of a jocko tone. Okay. All right, roll off the tone. Like, say, halfway. Mm -hmm. 
Nice cuts, but it's still beefy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's our belief that uh, that a tight bottom end is much better than than a, a, a big, lush, loose bottom end. You can fill a lot of space with a with a big bottom end, but a tight one is going to mix better. It's not going to get lost in in um, really reverberant rooms, and um, so that's what we focus on. Sorry for laughing. I just, you know, yeah, I'm we're immature. We're pun territory pretty quickly. That's, that's kind of why I put them on. <laughs> you take care of your bottom end. Right. So that was all four positions, right? Yes. Okay. So why don't we uh, tell people where to go online to find out about all the other guitars, you're, all the other basses you're doing? Because it's similar setup on a lot of other models, right? Yeah. Um, we use the same uh, multi scale fan fret variant of three quarters of an inch per string. And. Um, on our traditional looking instruments over there, we've shortened everything by two inches, which gives you kind of a faster uh, decay um, for more rhythmic play. Uh, everything else is long scale though. Long scale have, has uh, really taken off, especially with bands that do low tuning. Yeah. I mean, you can restring a bass like this and go as low as F sharp or even lower than that. You can go as down to like E zero with a string that's almost a quarter inch thick. And it's still, it still has fidelity because um, you're not just listening to the fundamental, which is almost inaudible. You're listening to the second harmonic and the third harmonic and interpreting the fundamental. And it's a really trippy experience. That's very cool. Yeah. Why don't you tell people where to go online to find out about all the stuff you guys do? Dingwallguitars.com. Uh, our new website just went live today, so all the information is nice and fresh and the photos are nice and fresh. Sweet. Thanks, Sheldon. Thanks, so much, Thanks Matt. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com.